Hey everyone, welcome back to the Outcomes Rocket. So excited to launch another episode today. Today, I have the privilege of hosting the amazing Dr. Tully on the podcast. They are a licensed clinical psychologist and neuroscientist focused on scalable technologies and public policy to create universal access to high quality, inclusive mental health support for young people. I'm excited to have them on the podcast uh, to really uncover some of the great work that Kuth is doing in the space. Dr. Tully, thanks so much for uh, being with us. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's a delight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, the pleasure is ours. So to kick things off, you know, I always enjoy understanding where folks are coming from and why their inspiration in healthcare. Can you share a little bit more about yours? Sure. I I think like many individuals in the behavioral health space, I came to clinical work and clinical research through lived experience. So I have family members and friends who've had difficult mental health recovery journeys. Um, you know, I've experienced mental health challenges myself, like many of us do. And when I was finishing university, I um, had fallen in love with research and decided I want to try and find out what's going on in the brain when folks are experiencing mental health challenges. And then how do we design treatments that can help them on their recovery journey? So that's how I ended up in this career. And I spent the largest portion of my career to date in an academic setting, mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of research and clinical work around community-based mental health and scalable solutions for young people. Uh, and recently, about a couple of years ago, I made the hop over to industry because I'd seen some really exciting things happening over there. That's great. Well, we're excited that you made that choice. We, we need uh, these perspectives to, to be successful in, in the mental health spaces. There's so many things impacting all of us. Uh, and and so let's let's dig into Kuth. Talk to us about what Kuth is up to and what they're doing to add uh, value to the healthcare ecosystem. Yeah, so Kuth is um, a UK company. It was founded uh, about 20 years ago uh, at the kitchen table to uh, digitally transform mental health care for young people. Um, right at kind of the birth of the internet, uh, the founders had the brilliant idea that we could use that to reach young people in a way they hadn't been reached before. Um, and since then, the company has grown to be the number one digital mental health provider for young people in the UK. And in 2023, the company was awarded a contract with the state of California Department of Healthcare Services um, to provide free mental health support to all California youth aged 13 to 25. So this was part of Governor Newsom's um, big initiative called the Children and Youth Behavioral Health Initiative. He and his administration have dedicated over $4 billion to these initiatives to provide coverage for every single kind of California young person from zero to 25. Um, so really kind of walking through that um, childhood to young adulthood journey. And Kuth won the contract to provide mental health support through our digital platform, Saluna. Mm -hmm. And so we're part of one of the work streams in that big funding from the governor is called the Behavioral Health Virtual Services Platform. And essentially it represents the state of California's digital strategy. They've recognized that there needs to be a digital strategy in order to do scalable, high quality mental health support for young people. They've decided to invest it and they've recognized the importance of public private partnerships to do that really well. And where we sit, uh, where Kuth sits, is really at filling the gap between that first moment that the young person might start having questions about what's happening for them and their brain and the experiences they're having to when they, when they might need to enter more formal outpatient treatment or beyond. So we're at that beginning of the mental health continuum of care and conceptualize ourselves as sort of the digital front door. It's often the first step into mental health um, spaces that young people have. It's really easily accessible right now. The platform is available on smartphones. Um, we will be releasing it web-based and um, tablet-based by the end of this year. And so it's in their pocket. It's a front door to support and information and trusted um, safe spaces to get help from their peers. Um, 
So I can talk a little bit about the platform if if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that no, that it, I would love to hear more. And and just wondering, how do people find out about it? So they released it in California. How do people find out about it? I feel like that's half the battle sometimes. I it, yeah, and actually, it's probably the largest battle that I think we have in digital mental health in general is getting the platforms in front of the people that need it and maintaining engagement. Um, so this is where I think the public-private partnership is a really strong um, approach because in order to bring these uh, platforms to the people, so to speak, you need really strong marketing and messaging and you need really far reach. And when you put the state of California together with a private company that has a strong marketing approach, you're able to kind of get those messages in front of people. So it could be hearing from your school-based mental health providers, your primary care practitioner, your teachers, um, could be hearing about it in a podcast ad break or seeing it, um, you know, in a YouTube ad break or hearing about it from friends that have already started using it. Um, or even hearing about it from your um, district members and legislators who are doing community engagement events and, and telling people about these resources. It's it's 100% free. I mean, the state has invested this money, so it's free at the point of service. Um, and so Amazing. just getting it in, yeah, getting it into people's hands, I think, is is the is the challenging part. Um, totally. Yeah. And, and it sounds like the the company you guys are using uh, the the your marketing muscle in combination yes. with their you know their footprint and access to be able to educate everyone sounds like it's digital sounds like it's online offline but it's getting to the people which is amazing so yeah I, that's I love our that. yeah that's so great yeah. and oh go ahead Dr Tully no Please. no carry on oh okay um and, and so what is it that is different. So, so, you know, the approach when you need the help, it's a digital front door to when you actually start to need the services that are more serious. Uh, what is it that, that you would say is a big differentiator for Kuth? Yeah. So, um, just a quick summary of the platform Saluna, it, um, takes, it provides support to young people through kind of three major pillars. So the first one is self-guided resources. So this is a collection mm. of informational articles or videos, um, as well as coping skills and um, self-assessments where the young person can discover what they want to discover based on the questions they have. So they get to design their own journey through those resources. Um, the second pillar is our peer community forum, um, where young people can post questions to other users on the platform and respond to other users' questions and provide peer to peer support. It's fully moderated. So what, what we've done is we've taken all the good stuff from the internet, which is, you know, information and community building. And we've left all the bad stuff to the side. So the bullying, the trolling, the inappropriate content and created this safe space for young people to help each other because lived experience and peer to peer experience, I think is probably one of the most powerful ways of reducing psychological distress. So this peer community forum is a place where users can, service users can help each other do that. So that's the second pillar of support. And then the third pillar is our um, behavioral health coaching. So you can get one-to-one -one coaching, either in-app via text or video coaching with one of our behavioral health coaching team members. And again, we're emphasizing lived experience, which I think is, you know, one area of differentiation is that we're recognizing this power of lived experience for support. So about three quarters of our coaches are individuals who are what are called certified peer support specialists. So these are individuals that have lived experience of mental health recovery or other life challenges like being unhoused or food insecurity, financial insecurity, and they have received training and support to help them use that lived experience as a way of supporting a young person in reaching their goals and figuring out how to navigate their own um, lived experience. Uh, the remaining group of our coaches are a mix of substance use counselors, general behavioral health professionals, and licensed individuals that do all of the things that licensed individuals do, like supervision and safeguarding, and risk management, and things like that. So it's this three, three pronged approach and it prioritizes autonomy for the young person. So I think this is another differentiator is that we know that 
young people want to have an autonomous journey through their support um, uh, experience. And the reason we know that is that we co-designed the, the platform with them. Um, and this is a core principle of Couth is that it should be youth informed, youth led. We're, we should be building platforms for young people by young people. What might work for me as a middle-aged person is not necessarily going to be what works for a 13 year old. And I should not put myself in the position of assuming that I know what that is. So having a youth led approach is going to be one of the main sort of drivers of success, I think, of getting young people engaged in, in using the platform. Now that's really, it's really great, Dr. Tully. No, please continue. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so that co-design with youth. Yes. And then there's two other things that I really love about it. And actually, there are two reasons why I ended up choosing to work with Couth as a company. Yeah. Um, so the first piece is the, what is that coaching model? It's not therapy, it's coaching. And it's designed to be goal-based and where the young person can achieve some movement towards their goal in a single session. So there's, you can have repeat sessions over time if that's what you want as a service user, but the approach has been designed to get you kind of maximal output or maximal benefit through just one coaching session. Um, and it's, like I said, it's goal-based. So traditionally in mental health care, the focus is on symptom reduction, right? It's like, how do we help you reduce your anxiety? How do we help you reduce your depression? And um, most companies out there are dutifully measuring those things using validated questionnaires like the PHQ or the GAD, um, and then seeing how their interventions reduce the scores on those questionnaires, which are really important. And we measure those things too. But the next step is figuring out like, what is the life that that young person wants to build, right? And what's what are the goals to get there? Right. And once you have those goals that the young person sets themselves, now you can identify what the barriers are. And it might not actually be symptom reduction. It might be getting a library card. It could be figuring out how to ask that person out on a date. It could be uh, getting some uh, support, financial support or um, food insecurity support. So by having this goal-based focus, we are again, circling back to that youth-led design that the young person gets to set their journey towards the life that they want to have. Um, so yeah, those are two really important differentiators. I have another one, but I am uh, aware of time. Bring it on, let's hear it. <laughs> so, yeah. so this is the second reason I, I, I you know, yeah. pursued a job with this company. So I spent a long part of my career in academia doing clinical training of providers and community. Right. UC Davis, health. Reading. Yeah, yeah, UC Davis. And I got the honor of part, actually contracting with DHCS, California's Department of Healthcare Services and their mental health um, commission to create a training and technical assistance center for community behavioral health members. And one of the things that I really wanted to focus on is how do we provide consistently high quality care? So in general, in this country, when a person like myself goes and does a clinical degree, I learn the things that I need to learn in school. I go out into the community and do my hours of training. I take my licensure exam and off I go into the field to practice as a clinician. And from that point on, unless I'm in a special scenario, I typically receive very little oversight, very little quality control, um, and very little supervision. And this means that nobody is checking in to make sure that I am doing good treatment, evidence-based work, and actually impacting um, my clients' lives in a meaningful way towards their goals. So there's very little quality control. And that means that you have this huge variety in the clinical practice field. And as a consumer, you really have no way of knowing if the person you contract with to do therapy or mental health support is good at their job or not. And there's lots of people that are brilliant at it. And there are lots of people that would benefit from additional support. At Coos, we have developed a proprietary clinical model for evaluating and auditing our practitioners to make sure that they are providing consistent high quality care. So is it integrative, responsive, person-centered, data-driven, 
um, you know, is it goal driven by the person? And every three months, our practitioners get evaluated against that model, both by their supervisors and their peers and receive the necessary training and support to maintain that high quality of care, which means no matter which coach that young person lands with, they can feel confident that that coach is going to do a good job um, and will be high quality. And that I think is like a key differentiator in mental health spaces in general in this country. Totally. Yeah. That, that standardization of care delivery is huge uh, in this space. And it sounds like you guys have, have a formula for it. And then the, you know, the thing that sticks out the most is, is, is really this self-guided journey from, you know, I, I just need some information and I could educate myself to maybe I need to talk to a peer to, okay, I'm at a point where I maybe need some direction and coaching and guidance. And it sounds like the, the platform really incorporates all that along with evidence-based practices that layer in standardization on top of that, taking it to a new level. So I, I think this is really great stuff um, for everybody listening, uh, you know, obviously, you know, worth checking out if you're working, uh, you know, to to get better in this area, whether you're a payer or an employer seeking for ways to take care of your people. Because we all know at the end of the day, it's it's productivity, it's it's happiness, yeah. it's, you know, all this stuff matters and mental health is at the core of it. Um, right. Healthy so, so- brains is a healthy economy, right? Healthy brains, <laughs> healthy society, healthy economy, healthiness in general, yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. And, and so look, um, I, I mean, this has been an outstanding and you do such a nice job of, of kind of just laying out the message so clearly. I could tell you, you have a passion for it and you really uh, love what you do. I what do. would you tell our listeners today as a call to action, you know, as a closing thought, what, what do they need to be thinking about? I think for listeners who are in the mental health service provision space, I think the call to action is to check out Saluna and think about how you might want to integrate this into your practice. I think um, we've done a really amazing job over the last decade creating some really interesting digital platforms. And the next step is we need to start integrating it into the existing system of care and give practitioners confidence in how to use those as a tool. So if you're a primary care practitioner and you're doing these screenings for depression and anxiety with young people, think about Saluna as an opportunity for an add-on tool or an initial tool for them to get support as you figure out the next steps. Um, so check it out. Like I said, it's free in California. We're out in some other states, Pennsylvania, and we're launching in a couple of others as well, hoping to go nationwide soon. Um, so yeah, for practitioners, that's what I would say to do. For parents and other young people, I would check it out and uh, spread the word. It doesn't really matter where a young person is on their journey. Saluna is a great tool to have in your pocket for those days when you just need a, le- a little extra support or a little extra boost. Love that. Dr. Tully, thank you so much. Uh, this has been a really insightful conversation. Uh, I've learned a lot and I know the listeners have as well. Folks, if you're listening to this, uh, check out the show notes. We'll leave Dr. Tully's information. Uh, they and their team are very interested in pursuing further conversations with you, your organizations, your family, your loved ones to really make it uh, ma- make this experience a lot easier because that's in the end what, what we need. So Dr. Tully, thank you so much for for being with us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.